In today's video, we're going to go into a detailed breakdown of all the VFX shots in our new short film, Parallel. Let's jump in. Parallel has 11 VFX shots in the entire film, three of which are relatively simple and just help drive the story forward. I am by no means a master at After Effects, I just mess around with the parameters that I know to try to get the effect that I'm looking for. These project files are very messy, I will try to break them down as best I can and show you some of the techniques that I use to get the effects that I was going for. So here we've got the first shot. It's a relatively simple one. I'll play it through for you real quick. For this shot, I created this text here that replicates the text in the shot of the battery charger. And you can see it slowly goes up. And to automate that, I just created this text layer here with some regular text. And I use an expression right here that parents the values in here to the numbers on this slider in this adjustment layer. Then I just keyframe the slider to go up as time goes on. And you can put this to any number that you'd like. I used Mocha Pro to get a good planar track on the background here and copied the data and pasted it directly onto the text. This second shot is very similar. I just copy and pasted the text from the first layer onto this one and then did a new planar track using Mocha Pro. I also just keyframed the opacity at the beginning of this clip to make it look like it's flickering on. This next shot is probably one of the most complex shots in the entire film. This is the drone shot chasing down Hedrick and discovering where he's going. Here you see we've got our pre-comp of essentially the entire effect happening here and then on top of that we have a lens effect just to give it that bulge look like we're looking through the lens of the drone while it's flying over. If we go in here into this pre-comp you can see it's pretty messy. Uh, we got a lot of things happening here. I'll just turn everything off and we'll go layer by layer. Here we've got our base footage. This actually appears in the trailer without any of the graphics overlaid. Pretty simple shot. The next two shots are our tracked layers. This first one, Dom track, is a track of Dom's body. So we have that locked on for the duration of the shot. And then the field track, this is a 3D track of the entire field. So this gets a plain data for all of the rest of the details that we have in later. This field track 2 is actually for the distant background over here. And this is for the final little tick marker that highlights the location of where he's going at the end of the shot. This is our 3D camera. This layer is just this kind of border area around the edge and this actually changes color for the different procedural moments when the drone is searching. So you can see here we've got this first bit is in this greenish bluish color and then it breaks here and then our second one is yellow because it's analyzing, it's in the process. Then it turns green because it's located where he's going. And then this is where the rest of the graphics would come in. This next layer is the tracker and that's this little bit here. And you can see it's a pre-composition, so we'll jump into there. So this pre-comp is the length of our drone shot and it changes colors with the overlying graphic in the previous shot. We've got a couple of different things going on here. This O is spinning around while it's locating. We've got these waveforms moving along, and this 2D image here is spinning around, and then there's also a pulsating square that comes out from around here. And then when it's located, right here, we have the uh, square transition into a diamond shape, but continues with the radar, and then this diamond disappears, and we're locked, and that's how the rest of the clip goes. So you can see that play out here. Our next layer here is the field path. You can see it's laid out in this 3D plane on top of our track of the field that we got earlier down here. I'll play that through for you. And this is pretty simple. This is basically just a line going all the way up and then we've got this solid here which is keyframed to move out of the way and reveal our line. 
just like that you can see it play out here and I'll show you that in the comp our next layer is the destination and this is the bit of text that pops up on the side in the 3d space when the destination is discovered it appears right here and this is a pre comp as well we'll jump in here and take a look so we got the text that fades in and then these two lines that come across the top and the bottom go back to our comp play that out for you and our final layer is the tick marker at the end of the shot that highlights where the location is. So I'll play the whole shot for you one more time so you can just take a look at everything and see how it all works together in the comp. Alright, moving on to the next shot in the film is this gun charge shot where Hedrick's got the gun underneath the table and we see the all these little holes here light up. So let's go ahead and watch this through. Now we'll break it down layer by layer. So first we've got our base shot. This is our raw footage. Our next layer here is a track of the weapon itself. And then the layer above that is the clip track. Throughout the duration of the shot, the weapon moves a little bit when he grabs it. So one track is for the weapon, one track is for the space around it. The next layer we've got is the inner glow. Let's see it here. For this one, I created one glow and then just copied it onto the rest of them with masks. So let's jump into here and see what we did in here. So for the inner glow, we have fractal noise and then add this sphere effect on top of it. This is what our shot starts like. Basically, I have the fractal noise applied to this layer, and I keyframe the contrast and the brightness to evolve over time and get really bright. And then on top of that, we add the sphere effect to make it look spherical like so. So in the shot, it looks like this. And for the rest of these, I just copy and paste it, and then masked out where necessary. This next layer is actually just a JPEG. I exported a screen grab of the gun and I photoshopped out the nerf logo here because I didn't want that to distract from the effect going on over here. So this is just a PNG tracked to the gun itself just to hide the nerf logo that would be right here. Our next layer is this orange solid which creates a nice little glow. I flick this on and off. You can see it's a nice little glow where the charge is happening. This is basically just an orange solid with a mask on it that's very feathered with keyframes on the opacity that correlate with the glow effect. Our next layer is the displace effect and this basically just warps the space where the mask is and the opacity of this effect changes over time and it correlates with the laser charging up as well. So let's watch it through one more time. Moving on to our next shot is this laser shot about three quarters way through the film. Let's take a look at it real quick. Super quick shot, but we'll quickly break it down. So we got our base footage. Our next layer is the background track, and this is just tracking the background because that's the environment where our laser is tracked to. After that, we've got this orange solid, which actually has the lightsaber effect, which is a free plug-in from Video Copilot. And it's a really powerful plug-in to get realistic looking lasers and lightsaber effects with minimal effort. We basically just have this orange solid with the saber effect on it tracked to our background and I've enabled 3D here so we can just easily have it go through 3D space and get smaller as it gets further away from the camera. Our next layer here is a pre-keyed piece of footage that I have from a footage pack called Action Essentials 2. And this is just a basic wall hit. You can see right here. And this is also parented to the background with motion blur enabled to get that organic look. But the motion blur is the camera whips down. And then our next layer is the same clip as the one previous with a color vibrance on it and a lot of blur. 
This is basically just to make it look like the laser as it hits is glowing off of the pieces of the wall that are shooting out in the layer before it. So I'll play that back for you real quick. Moving on to the next shot in this laser fight scene is this one where Kiara gets shot by the laser beam. We have our base footage and then the next layer up is the laser beam actually coming in. And this is using the same plugin from Video Copilot along with some glow effects just to get this extra bloom all around. This one also has a mask on it as her hand goes over top of the laser just to add to the realism. These two layers were not used in the final comp. So we'll go up to this layer here. And this is just a bunch of sparks that appear after she gets hit. You can't directly see the impact and this shot moves so quick that I didn't bother putting anything here. Instead we just have this burst of sparks which is tracked to the background and has motion blur enabled so as she falls down they just go blurry and wild like the rest of the scene here. So I'll play that through for you. Moving on to the third and final laser shot, we've got this one here. Andrea gets shot in the shoulder. So first we've got our base footage. Our second layer here is actually very subtle. It's right here. As she gets hit, I've got a red solid just with a mask on it and I keyframed it to move with her as she falls down. This is just to look like she was burned when she got shot. Doesn't look that great right here but with everything else on top of it it kind of hides the fact that it's a sloppy track our next shot is the orange solid with the saber on it along with a couple glow effects to help make it look like the highlights are bloomed off the laser so here's our laser beam coming in and also keep in mind that all the lasers and most of the effects that I have in these have motion blur enabled because when you're tracking items with handheld footage, it really sells the effect when you see all that organic motion blur. Our next layer is this sparks layer, and you can see this upon impact is right here. And you can see it hits and it sparks out, and then I have it also tracked to the environment, so as the camera whips, there's a lot more motion blur as well. Our next layer is this firecracker layer, and this is for the impact right here. I'll turn that on and off for you. And this helps cover up the little burn mark. And then we'll go ahead and watch it through. Our next shot is the first portal shot of Dom assembling the portal. There's not a whole lot happening in this shot. Got our base video. Our second layer is the device track, which is actually not even used in this shot. It would be to track the device in the back because I was going to have some glow effects happen in this shot, but I saved those for the shot after. Early object track. This tracks the object back here earlier in the shot, and I'll show you why in just a second. This next layer here is the firecracker, which we see happen right as he puts the two connectors together. I added a little bit of blur to help blend it with the rest of the scene since it's a little out of focus. Our next layer is an adjustment layer which helps add a little bit of glow around his hands to help sell the effect. We've got it illuminating parts of his hand, his hand over here, a little spot down here, and a little bit of the portal in the background here. Our next layer called glow end. This is actually not till the end of the shot. And this is after he flicks the machine on, there are a little little nubs on the top here that start glowing blue and transition us to the next shot. It's a super subtle effect but it helps keep everything grounded and transition us into the next shot where the machine is charging up. This next layer is also very subtle. It's the same four little blue dots except these are to be like little bursts of power as soon as he gives it energy through the connectors here. And you can see it right here. This next layer was going to be a lens flare, but I ended up not using that one, so it's just muted. This next shot actually has a lot going on, so I don't know if my computer is going to be able to process it real time, but I'll see what I can do. So we've got a lot happening in the shot. There's one subtle detail I'd like to point out, is that this discharge layer is actually the same text that we had earlier 
in this shot because it's the same device here and I have it tracked right over here and as it's discharging and charging up the device this number on the side is slowly going down over time and I have it blurred and tracked so it looks like it's grounded and part of the rest of the environment and just watch right here and as I play it back for you again super subtle but it's the little details that really make it come to life breaking down all these layers Every other one is just a track mat, which basically means it's a shape that you can't see, but it's acting as a mask over top of another layer. Once again, this is a rather complex shot that has a lot going on, so it's a little difficult to play it back in real time for you. This layer here is our object track, and this is basically an environment track that all of these items are gonna be parented to. It's really important to start the editing process off with this because then you can have a base layer that everything's connected to, and everything moves together in the same plane. One of our first visible layers is this cores layer, and these are basically just little beams of light that streak down from the top here. And these are just solids that I've applied the saber and glow effects to, similar to how I did the laser beam earlier. And that's essentially the concept I use for all of these clips. All of the elements here that you see coming in are just different variations of that saber effect going along paths. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to have a more detailed breakdown of this specific shot. This is one of the more complex VFX shots in this entire film and it took me quite a long time to figure it out because I wanted it to look dialed in and perfect. Let me know if that's something you'd be interested in. Towards the end of the shot here, as we move down, there's this subtle blue glow around everything, and this is just a mask of a blue solid. Create a circular mask and feathered out the edges to make it look like a glow. This is also parented to that object track to keep it grounded in the rest of the environment. Our next shot in the film is right towards the end when Hedrick is activating the portal device to get him to the parallel universe. So I'll play it through for you real quick. Starting with the beginning, we've got our portal track, and this starts midway through and begins tracking the actual portal. I didn't need it to start earlier because nothing actually happens until after he flicks the switch. So the track starts somewhere in the middle here. Next up we've got the middle swirl, which is actually a copy and paste in this shot, which is in the middle here. That is just tracked into the middle. This orange layer is actually just a track mat for the middle swirl. The next layer up, we've got an adjustment layer, and this has our optical flares on it. In the optical flares, I've keyframed the brightness to go from zero to 100. Over the course of the portal device booting up, our next layer is a glow layer, and this basically just is this blue effect that bleeds out from the middle of the device, fills up the entire space. This also has a Gaussian blur on it too, that is keyframed to go from zero all the way up to almost 100. Just blur out everything. Our next layer is displace, and this makes everything look like it's being warped slightly. You can see some distortion here in his arm, all the items, the rack in the background here. And then on top of that, we've got this other adjustment layer with a bulge effect, and this is where it all kind of sucks into the middle slightly. And this is on top of everything, so it all just melds together. Moving on to the final VFX shot of the film, we've got the other angle from our previous shot of Hedrick disappearing, and in this shot, he's already gone. So we'll watch it through one time. For this blue effect, I copied the effects in our previous comp and pasted them into here, and then just flipped the keyframes so instead of going from the regular shot turning blue and then bulging in it bulges out and then the blue goes away our base layer is the footage our second layer is the track of this environment just kind of this general area it's a pretty 2d plane so it, it didn't need to be very specific our next layer is a dust wave effect and this is some of that pre-keyed footage from action essentials this is just a dust wave that kicks out from here since there was quite an energy force here, I wanted the dust and everything to kick up around the sides. This has a track mat covering up the bed here. 
Then we've got our next layer, which is the blue layer that we had from before with the glow and the Gaussian blur and the turbulent displace. This next layer is also a track mat, and this is for our blue layer, just to kind of affect this area and not these areas on the sides. I wanted to make it look like it's localized and kind of more over this way. Our next layer is an adjustment layer for displace. You can see as I toggle it on and off how it affects everything, and this slowly keyframes out over time. Our next layer, we have the bulge effect, which bulges back out. If you look right in here, it returns to normal. So we'll take one last look at that shot. So that's the breakdown of all the VFX shots in our latest short film, Parallel. I'm by no means a visual effects artist, but when it comes to these short films, I try to do my best to get the shots that I'm looking for. If you have any questions or ways I can improve my workflow, I'd love to hear from you down in the comments below. I try my best to answer and reply to all the comments, and I'd love to hear from you. I hope you liked this breakdown. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one.